In the past, you've probably gotten messages from your doctor or your barber or a personal trainer or whoever reminding you that you have an appointment coming up in the next day or so. And I find these types of messages really helpful because often I'll forget to put something on my calendar and that message actually serves as the reminder that I need to do that thing. And I'm sure it's also really helpful for the people that are sending the reminders because that way they're not just sitting around doing nothing when people don't show up. There are quite a few out of the box solutions that send reminders like that. But in this series of videos, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own using Google App Sheet. And if you subscribe to Google Workspace, the core version of Google App Sheet is already included with that, so you're able to do this with no additional charge. And unlike the out-of-the-box solutions, you can completely customize it for your own business. This is a three-part series, and if you follow along, it'll probably take you 10 or 20 minutes to create your own app. In the first part, we're gonna look at how you actually view and create the appointments. In the second part, we're gonna look at how you automatically send out reminders when the appointment is upcoming in the next day or so. And then in the third part, we're gonna look at how to create a form in Google Forms that you can use to have customers go in and confirm their appointments and then update their information within AppSheet. But before we do that, let's walk through what the final app will look like and how it works. This is the AppSheet app where you as the app owner would actually manage your appointments. So I have three different appointments set up in here. They show up as orange right now, which means that they're unconfirmed. Uh, once the actual customer, in this case, goes and confirms them, they would turn green, or they also have the option to cancel them, in which case they would turn red. And in order to create a new appointment, you click this add button up here, you put in the person's first name, last name, email address, uh, and the date and the time of the appointment. I have all the appointments set up to automatically, automatically be one hour long here, but since you can completely customize this in AppSheet, you could make it a different length or you could put in an end time there so that uh, each appointment was a variable length. And then as far as the actual reminders that get sent, I'll go into my Gmail here. They get a reminder like this saying that they have an appointment coming up and they can click this link to confirm it. Once they do that, it goes to this Google form where they have the option to either confirm or cancel. So I'm gonna hit confirm in this case and submit. It just comes up with a standard Google form response saying that it was submitted. And now if I go back to my app again, you see that that Sandy Boxer appointment turns green, uh, meaning that that particular appointment was confirmed. Now we're gonna take a look at how to build the app. I put together a Google Doc that includes all the steps that we're gonna follow in all three parts of this series, and I'll include a link to that document down in the comments. All right, we're gonna start by creating a new Google Sheet called Appointments. And I'm going to just copy the columns from my demo sheet. That's the one that I just showed in the demo um, for simplicity here. So that's there, but those are also listed in the sheet here. So you can basically just go and, and copy and paste that from the sheet and enter each one of those names as a column up here. Okay, so that's the first part. Next, I want to create a new app sheet app for appointments. So in order to do that, you go into go to appsheet.com. If you had not previously signed up for an account, it would ask you to do that. And then once you do, it would bring you to a screen that looks like this. And I want to say that I want to create a new app and I want to start with existing data. So I'm going to again, name the app appointments, hit choose my data. And I'm going to select the, select the appointment sheet that we just created. Okay, so it takes a few seconds here and it's gonna actually create my app. And then it's gonna come up with something that looks like this to say customize with app sheet. And now it will come up with a view like this. I'm in the editor for my appointments app and the data section here, data menu here is the first thing that I wanna look at. So you see it's automatically created a table within app sheet for appointments, which is basically that Google sheet created in the previous step. And now we're going to actually go through and edit some of the attributes uh, or properties of each one of the fields within here, as far as like how that field appears and how AppSheet actually treats it. 
So for most of these, it's pretty straightforward and it's gonna take a little bit to go through them. Um, so I'm gonna fast forward the video. But if you look back at the sheet, it's got all the properties that I'm setting on each one of these things. And if you go back in slow-mo in the video, you should be able to see exactly what I'm doing. All right, these last three take a little bit more explanation, so I'm gonna stop fast forwarding here. Uh, so status, I wanna set its type to a enum, which is actually uh, short for enumeration. It's basically, it basically means it's a list of values. Uh, and these are the different values that I want to make, uh, have you to be able to select in that particular case. So first one is unconfirmed and I edit the values by clicking the edit pencil next to status and you see it's got values down here under type details so I'm just gonna click add and I'm gonna paste in the first one and then click add again and just paste in each one of these. Okay, and click done. And I also want to set a show if formula for this, which basically will have this only be shown in certain cases. And basically what this expression is saying, I don't want it to be shown on forms. So I don't want it to be editable on the actual forms um, because you're not gonna be able to see it. So I can do that again in here. And next to show, you see there's a check box, but there's also this uh, formula icon over here. So I'm gonna click the formula and then click in the formula box and then basically just paste in that expression that I copied from the document. And that is done. Okay, and then I need to add a few virtual columns as well. And these are basically um, virtual columns or columns that are computed based on other values within actual values within the data. So the first one is one that comes automatically uh, in when it actually imported the table. It's called computed name. And if I look at the formula for that, it's basically doing a concatenation, which is a combination of two uh, text values of the first name and last name. So it puts that together into one field so I can use first name and last name as a single property. So that one again is automatically done for me. Um, the And then the next thing I wanna do is a computed value or virtual column again for the end date. And this is the formula that I wanna use right here. So I'm gonna click plus up here to add a virtual column. I'm gonna call it end date. And I'm going to click the expression editor and paste in that formula. What this is saying is that I want the end date to be the date that was selected in the form plus one hour. Uh, and base, often that will be the same date. So if today was the 12th and it was 1 p.m., it would still be the 12th at 2 p.m. When this plus one hour matters is if it goes over midnight. So for example, if it was the date was uh, at 11.30 p.m. Uh, and it went over 24 hours, it would actually put it into, or sorry, it went over midnight, it would actually put it into the next day in that case. So that's what the plus one is about here. Uh, and then I can click done there. And then the same thing for the end time. I want it to be the time plus the selected time plus one hour. So I'm gonna create another virtual column, call it end time and put in that formula. And the last column we need to create is color. Uh, and that's basically what controls the color of the appointments when they show up on the calendar. So orange for unconfirmed, green for confirmed, red for uh, canceled. So in order to do that, I create another virtual column. I'm gonna call this color. The expression or formula is going to be this. And I need to set the type to color. And I need to actually add in all the allowed values. So I'm gonna put in here green, red, and orange. And that is done. 
So that's all of our data set up. Let's just save what we have here. And the next thing we're gonna do is, I don't know why that just popped up again. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is actually update our view or the default view that was created in app sheet to show our calendar. So our views are underneath the view menu here, which has a little phone icon. So I'm gonna click that. You see AppSheet has created a, a view for us for our appointments data table automatically. And we can basically just repurpose that. So the first thing I wanna do is change the view type to calendar. Right now it's a deck, which is basically shows like a list of cards. So I wanna show calendar instead. And that looks more like the demo app that we saw that actually shows a calendar as the main view. And then we've got to set these properties for our view. So we already changed it to the calendar type. We want to set the start date as date. We want to set the end date or start time as time. We want to set the end date as our end date virtual column. The end time as our end time virtual column the description as the computed name. So again, that's the first name plus the last name together. And that's gonna control what the actual like description or title that appears on our appointments looks like. And then we wanna set the category to the color. And that's again, the virtual column that controls the color based on the status. And then the final thing that we wanna do down here is set the icon for this. So right now you see it's showing this kind of list icon down here. But if we go down on the display and paste in that other icon value for calendar alt, uh, it'll change the icon to that, which is just a little bit more appropriate for our application here. And again, let's just save. And now we're getting close to the end of part one here. Uh, but the next thing we need to do is set up two actions for confirming and canceling appointments. So basically on our uh, view when we actually go in and click an appointment. If you want to manually be able to confirm it or cancel it, it will, these will be buttons that allow you to do that. So actions are in app sheet underneath this little lightning bolt icon. I only have one uh, table currently or one view selected currently, which is appointments. Uh, so I can just click the plus next to that in order to be able to create a new action and then create new action button. So the first one I'm going to call confirm. And I want to use this option, data set values of some columns in this row. You see that that's already selected there. And I wanna set the status, so this column, to confirmed when this button is checked. And I want the icon for this to be check circle. So basically a check mark, you see it defaults to the paper airplane there, which a check mark is more appropriate for this case. So I'm gonna select that one and I'm gonna save. Uh, and oh, and I also wanna add that I, a confirmation message. So I, if you accidentally click this, I wanna make sure that you confirm the appointment before you proceed in doing that. So we're gonna show a confirmation message to do that and that is down here under behavior. You need to check needs confirmation and then you can just paste the message in here. So are you sure you want to confirm this appointment? Okay, that's done, let's save. And then we want one more action that does the same thing except for cancel. So I'm gonna create another action here and I'm gonna call this one cancel. Same thing, I wanna set values of some columns for this row. I wanna set the status. In this case, I wanna make it canceled. I want an icon that is, oh, I didn't put it in here, but I, I will go back and do that. Uh, I have to remember which one it was. I think it's slash There it is, it's uh, this one. So it's it's just called cancel. So I'll go and I'll go back and put that in the sheet. That's our icon uh, and we need confirmation again. And we say, wanna say, are you sure you want to cancel this appointment? So that again, that's under behavior, needs confirmation with that message. Save that again. Now we have our cancel action. And then finally, now that we set everything up to use the 
and the, in our actual views when we set up the appointment view to use the end date and the end time and the color, we can hide those so that they don't actually show up within our forms because they're kind of supplemental information that help the app, but you don't re need to actually see them. So in order to do that, I can go back to my data table and for those three, I can just uncheck show now and click save. All right, that wraps up part one. So if you use that preview over on the right side of the screen, you should now be able to go into your app and view the calendar, click the add button or the plus button to create a new event and either manually confirm or cancel it. In the next part, we're gonna look at how to actually send out the reminders automatically to uh, customers when the appointment is one day away.